I'm Brittany, this is Wei Ying, and welcome to Gay Watch, where we watch gay things, and sometimes we read them. Uh, we continue our trek through the side stories of Modazushe Volume 5. Um, just like I said last time, because of just certain elements of the second side story, um, I am not going to film myself reading that, I'll read that in my own time. Just because there's some stuff in the... Is just, I'm playing it safe. Well, you know, it's fine. Um, which means we are going to the third side story called Villainous Friends. It is on page 267. And uh, if you haven't been here before, hello. This is a live reading. This is a casual thing. Uh, we're into the side stories now, so we really have no idea what's going to happen. Um, I cough sometimes. I just, I have a lot of respiratory things going on. It's, we try to ignore it. It's totally fine. We usually get through about 50 pages in one sitting of a couple of hours. And yeah, it's just, it. we're heavy into the side stories now. So unless there's something I'm forgetting, which is a strong possibility, these are normally live streams, but because of potential um, erotic content, uh, these are being pre-recorded right now, but it's still being treated as like a live situation. Like, I will not be editing this. You get what you get to kind of keep up with the live vibe. And now I think that's it. Now I think that's it. So, once again, page 267, Villainous Friends. And I think we'll get through three and four. Yeah, the third and fourth side stories today. We may have to stretch a little bit to finish the fourth one, but it's fine. It's okay. <sighs> so. <clears throat> Shoot. I think I knew that the side stories weren't all focused on Wei Wuxian and Lan Wangji or either or. I think I knew that. What? Was I expecting a Shu Young POV? No. Hang on. I'm adjusting my brain a second. What on God's green fucking earth could we read about Shu Young? I just didn't have that on my bingo card. Maybe I should have, but I really didn't. So now I'm just, now I don't know. I don't know. What, what I mean, maybe they will tell me if I read the thing. So, okay. Shu Young, Shu Young sat at a wooden table near a roadside stall. He had one leg, he had one bent leg propped on the long bench where he lounged as he ate a bowl of tangwan glutinous rice bowls, rice balls, and sweet broth. He clinked and clanked his spoon in the bowl while eating, making a racket. Though initially satisfied with his meal, he suddenly realized toward the end that the tenguan were way too sticky and the rice wine was not sweet enough. And so, Xu Yang stood up and kicked over the stall. The stall owner, who had been bustling around, was stunned by his actions. He looked on helplessly as the boy suddenly went on a rampage and then turned and left with a grin on his face, without so much as a word once he was done. We are impeccably in character so far. It took quite a while for the peddler to react, but he belatedly caught up to him and raged, What are you doing? Wrecking your stall, Shu Yang answered. The peddler was infuriated. You're sick! Insane! To put it fucking mildly, Shu Young remained unmoved. The stall owner continued to curse him. 
One finger pointed at Chu Young's nose. You little bastard! Instead of paying me after eating my food, you have the nerve to wreck my stall? Shu Young's right thumb twitched, and the sword at his waist left its sheath. He patted the peddler's face with the tip of his sword, its glint sinister and ominous. The movement was ever so light and gentle. The Ten Yuan were yummy, he said in a saccharine tone. Add more sugar next time. Having said that, he turned around and swaggered on his way. Is it just going to be like him leaving a trail of both alive and dead people in his wake, but nevertheless traumatized from the experience of having run into him? The stall owner was both terrified and petrified. Livid, he could only choke with silent fury as he helplessly watched Shu Young walk a good distance away. Then, all of a sudden, his frustration and indignation boiled over, and he let loose a furious bellow. How can you do this in broad daylight with no rhyme or reason? Who are you to do this? Shu Young waved without even looking back. Nah, many things in the world happen without rhyme or reason. They're called unexpected disasters. Bye! It, it, it's, this seems really obvious, because it is, because obviously when you know a character's backstory, just everything makes sense, but like, there's something particularly brutal about knowing the backstory to an MXTX character, because then it's like every single thing they do makes sense. So much sense. I guess because usually, like, her characters are extremely faithful to themselves at every step. So it's not just, like, a regular person, okay? A regular, like, human mortal person who's a writer, right? You hear the backstory of the other character... And every now and then, from that point on, you're like, oh, look at that. Oh, I know why they did that one thing on that one page. And then, like, 20 pages later, you're like, I don't... But no, with MXTX, once you know the backstory, every single little thing they do makes sense. That's witchcraft. That's that's not okay. That's suspicious. That's, that's not... Mm -hmm. He briskly skipped along, passing by a few streets. After a while, a person, approached, a person approached from behind him. His walk was easy and unhurried as he kept pace with Xu Yang, and his hands were tucked politely behind his back. Jing Guang Yao sighed. Ooh. We've never gotten that much. Like, we were left to assume, basically, how much they... What? What is happening? I turn around for just a moment and you cause such a mess. I start out paying for just a bowl of Tang Wan, but now must pay for no less than the tables, chairs, benches, pots, bowls, and pans. You're short, you're short on that bit of money? asked Xu Young. No, answered Jing Guang Yao. Then what are you sighing about? Villainous friends! Such an idiot. I don't think you're short on money either. Can't you try to be a regular customer once in a while? Back in Kui Prefecture, I never needed money to get the things I wanted, said Chu Young. Like so. As he spoke, he casually swiped a skewer of candied hawthorns from the pole of a roadside peddler. The peddler gaped, dumbfounded. It was probably the first time he had encountered such a shameless person. Chu Young bit a candied hawthorn off the stick. And besides, it's not like you can't sort out some measly stall being wrecked. You little hooligan, Jin Guang Yao said with a laugh. Wreck stalls if that's what you want. You can burn down the entire street for all I care, as long as you mind two things. Don't wear the sparks amid snow uniform and keep your face hidden. Don't let anyone find the culprit and put me on the spot. He tossed money to that particular peddler. 
Shu Young spat out a hawthorn pit. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw a small patch of purple and blue that wasn't well concealed at Jing Guangyao's temple. He laughed. How'd you get that? Jing Guangyao shot him a slightly reproachful glance and straightened his cap to hide the bruise. It's a long story. Ni Ming Zhu hit you? Shu Young asked. Do you think I'd be standing here talking to you now if he had been the one to hit me? Answered Jing Guangyao. Shu Young had to agree with that. The two of them left Landling City and traveled to a strange complex of buildings located out in the wilderness. It was not a particularly impressive sight to behold. A row of dark, grim houses lay beyond the tall perimeter wall. There was a square in front of the houses enclosed by a chest-high metal fence plastered with red and yellow talismans. At the center of the square was a collection of peculiar equipment, such as metal cages, guillotines, and boards studded with nails. Some shabbily dressed people were also lumbering around. These people had ashen skin and empty gazes. They milled about aimlessly in the open square, bumping into one another from time to time. Their strange, rasping breaths sounded like leaking wind. This was the corpse refinery. Jing Guangshan desperately coveted the Yin Tiger Tally. No matter how many covert attempts he made, no matter what tactics he employed, Wei Wuxian has, had yielded to neither the carrot or the stick, leaving Jing Guangshan to slam into brick walls every single time. And so Jing Guangshan had thought, since you can do it, why can't others? Wei Ying, I refuse to believe you're the only person in the whole world with the skill to create a device like that. The day will come when you're surpassed, trampled underfoot, and mocked by future generations. Let's see if you can still be so arrogant when the time comes. And so, Jing Wangshan brazenly recruited deviant cultivators who pursued the demonic path in imitation of Wei Wuxian and put them to use for his own aims. Did we know that? Did I know that? There's a lot to know in this series, especially between the book and the show. Did we fucking know that? We knew that people obviously started pursuing the demonic path and started like trying to copy and emulate Wei Wuxian. Did we know that his dad? Like, hired some of them? I don't think we knew that. I mean, I'm not fucking surprised, but I don't think we knew that. I think that's new information. He invested massive sums of money and resources into these people, ordering them to clandestinely analyze the structure of the entire tally in order to replicate and restore it. We knew he wanted to do that. Very few of them made any headway in their research. The one who made it the furthest turned out to be the youngest of them, Xu Yang, whom Jing Guangyao had personally recommended. Overjoyed by the results, Jing Guangshan designated Xu Yang a, a guest cultivator and accorded him significant privileges and freedom. The corpse refinery was a piece of- Oh no! Sorry. Jing Guangshan wasn't the one we knew was, well, we could guess, wasn't the one that, like, we knew to be gathering and trying to put it together. That was some Wen Roan shit. In a side story, did she just, like, drop in a thing that kind of really cements Jing Guangshan's inevitable journey down the same path as Wen Roan? or at least an extremely similar one, did she just, like, drop that confirmation in just, like, a little side story with Shu Yang and Am I making, like, way more out of this than I need to be? I don't know. I don't know. What? I don't... I, I, I think so. It feels like it. Whew. Hello. Uh, ba -ba. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, uh, mm, ah, almost there. The corpse refinery was a piece of land and Jing Guangyao had specially requested to allow Xu Yang to conduct his independent research in secrecy. In other words, to allow him to fool around as brazenly as he wished. So the corpse refinery, to me, sounds like someone just made their own little burial mounds. Right? 
When they arrived at the corpse refinery, two of the fierce corpses were fighting in the square. These two were completely unlike the other walking corpses. They were well dressed, the whites of their eyes were visible, and they held weapons in their hands. Sparks flew everywhere as the swords clashed. There were two chairs in front of the metal fence. Jing Guangyao and Xu Yang took their seats at the same time. As Jing Guangyao adjusted his collar, a walking corpse shuffled unsteadily over to present a tray. Tea, Xu Yang said. Jing Guangyao glanced at it. A strange purplish red object lay at the bottom of the teacup, bloated from soaking. Who could say what it was? He pushed the teacup away with a smile. Thanks. Xu Yang pushed the teacup back and said warmly, This is my secret blend, which I made personally. Why don't you drink it? Jing Guangyao pushed the teacup away again and replied amicably, It's precisely because it's your secret blend that I don't dare to drink it. Xu Yang raised an eyebrow, then turned his head to watch the fierce corpses fight. The battle was growing increasingly heated and intense. Swords and claws slashed, blood and flesh flew everywhere, and yet the boredom on Xu Yang's face deepened. After a while, he snapped his fingers and made a gesture. Both fierce corpses instantly began to convulse, then turned their swords on themselves and sliced off their own heads. The headless bodies flopped to the ground, still spasming. Wasn't the fight going well? asked Jing Guangyao. Too slow, said Xu Yang. They were a lot faster than the two I saw last time, remarked Jing Guangyao. Xu Yang held out his black gloved hand and extended out a finger. Waggling it, he said, It depends on what they're compared against. Those two wouldn't even last long against the ordinary fierce corpses that Wei Wuxian summoned to action with his flute, much less Wen Ning. What's your rush? Jing Guangyao said with a smile. I'm certainly in no hurry. Take your time and tell me if there's anything you need. Ah, yes. He took something out of his sleeve and handed it to Xu Yang. Maybe you need this. Xu Yang flipped through it. All of a sudden, he straightened up in his seat. Wei Wuxian's manuscripts. That's right, said Jing Guangyao. Xu Yang lowered his head and looked through it with eyes shining. A moment later, he raised his head. Are these really his handwritten manuscripts? The ones he wrote when he was 19? Of course, said Jing Guangyao. Everyone fought tooth and nail to get their hands on these. It took me quite a lot of effort to gather them all. Xu Yang cursed under his breath. The excitement in his eyes grew increasingly brighter. After flipping through them, he remarked, It's incomplete. Given the raging fire and intense battle at the burial mounds, you should count your lucky stars that I could even find these remnants. Use them wisely. How about that flute of his? Xu Yang asked. Can't you get me Chen Ching? Jing Guangyao spread his hands in a gesture of helplessness. Not, Jin, not Chen Ching. Jing Guanyin took it. Doesn't he hate Wei Wuxian the most? Xu Yang wondered. What does he need Chen Ching for? Didn't you also get your hands on Wei Wuxian's sword? Give him the sword in exchange for the flute. Wei Wuxian gave up on using Stubian a long time ago. It even sealed itself off. No one can pull it out of its sheath. What's the damn use of keeping it other than as, as a display piece? Xu Yang unwittingly setting up a domino. Xu Gongzhi really is adept at imposing the impossible on others, Jing Guangyao said. Do you think I never tried? Not everything is that simple. Jing Jing <laughs> Jing Wenyin is obsessed to the point of madness. He thinks Wei Wuxian is still alive. If Wei Wuxian does return, he might not come for his sword, but he would definitely come for Chen Cheng. And so, Jiang Wenyin absolutely will not hand it over. If I said so much as another word on the subject, he'd snap. Xu Yang snorted twice with laughter. Mad dog. Just then, two disciples from the Jin clan of Lan Ling dragged over a cultivator with disheveled hair. Weren't you going to refine a new set of fierce corpses, Jiang Wenyao said. As it happens, I've brought materials for you. The cultivator's eyes were red with fury. They seemed to burn as the man glared at Jing Guangyao and struggled with all his might. Who's he? Xu Yang asked. Without batting an eyelid, Jing Guangyao answered, Everyone I send you is a sinner, of course. Hearing this, the cultivator lunged with all his might, somehow spitting out the ball of cloth that gagged him, along with a mouthful of blood. Jing Guangyao, you heinous, inhumane scum, the nerve of you to call me a sinner. What sin have I committed? 
He said this slowly and clearly, each word forming a barrage of sharp nails he wanted all too badly to drive into Jingguang Yao. Xu Yang snorted a laugh. What's going on? The person behind the cultivator yanked at him as if pulling at a dog's leash. Jingguang Yao waved his hand. Gag him. But Xu Yang said, whatever for? Let me hear him. I want to know why you're a heinous, inhumane scum. I can't make out what he's saying when he barks like a dog. Hesu Gongji is a renowned cultivator, Jingguang Yao said in a slightly reproachful tone. How can you address him with such disrespect? Cultivator gave a grim laugh. I'm already in your clutches, at your mercy. Why keep up the act? You don't have to look at me like that, said Jingguang Yao amiably. I had no choice in the matter either. The election of a cultivation chief is only par for the course, given the way the situation has developed. Why must you fan the flames and stir up conflict? I warned you repeatedly, but you insisted on ignoring me. Now that we're at this impasse, there's no turning back. I do regret that it came to this, and it pains me. What do you mean, par for the course, and fanning the flames? asked Hesu. Jingguangshan only wants to establish the position of cultivation chief to emulate the Wen clan of Qishan and reign supreme over all the other clans. Do you think the rest of the world is too ignorant to see that? You set me up only because I spoke the truth. Jin Guangyao smiled and said nothing. When you, when you people get your way, all the cultivation clans will see the Jin clan of Lanling's true colors, Hisu continued. Do you think you can rest easy simply by killing me? Big mistake. Huge. Just big. Huge. I, mm. the, Hes, the, the He clan of Tingshan has many talented people. From now on, we will work as one against you. We will never submit to you when dogs in disguise. Ooh, I like him. Too bad he is so dead. On hearing this, Jin Guangyao narrowed his eyes slightly, while the corner of his lips curved up. It was the same gentle, affable expression he usually wore, but his Su's heart dropped at the sight of it. There was suddenly a commotion outside the corpse refinery, with the cries of women and children audible among the noise. Hesu snapped his head back, only to see a bunch of cultivators from the Jin clan of Lan Ling in the process of hauling 60 or 70 people inside the complex. All of them wore the same uniform. There were men and women, elders and youngsters, each of them terrified and panicked. Some were already wailing their hearts out. A young girl and boy, both trussed with rope, kneeled on the ground and shouted miserably to Hesu, Gah! Oh, shit. Hesu was stunned. His face blanched white as paper. Jin Guangyao, what do you mean by this? You can just kill me. Why implicate my entire clan? You know, I think a lot of us, when presented with the fact that you know, Meng Yao and Xu Yang uh, had partnered up behind the scenes for a lot of stuff. And we didn't get very much in terms of watching, getting to see them be, you know, villainous friends. Um, we were like super curious though. We were like, yeah, but what does that bad bitch moment look like? What does that pair of pure fucking evil of two very distinct flavors look like what is that what does like an afternoon with them look like and mxtx fucking gave it to us and now there's like 70 people involved and i don't want it i don't know i'm this this isn't this isn't this isn't gonna be a good time for anybody except maybe the villainous friends Jin Guangyao looked down and straightened the cuffs of his sleeves. He beamed as he explained, Didn't you just remind me that I won't rest easy if I only kill you? That the He clan of Tingshan has many talented people who will work as one from now on and never submit to me? The prospect terrifies me so much that after thinking it over, I'm left with no choice but to do this. It was as if a fist had been shoved down Hesu's throat, rendering him speechless. After a long silence, he raged. You're massacring my clan for no reason? Do you really not fear public condemnation? 
Do you not fear what Chifeng Jun will do when he finds out? At the mention of Niming Ju, Jing Guang Yao arched his brow. Xu Yang laughed so hard he almost toppled over in his chair. Jing Guang Yao shot him a glance, then turned back around and said in an even tempered tone, You can't say that. The He clan of Ting Shan used the full force of its power to start an uprising and plot to assassinate sect leader Jin. All of you were caught red handed. How could you call this no reason? A number of the captives cried out, Gah, he's lying! We didn't, we really didn't! What a crock of shit, Hisu spat. Open your damn eyes and take a good look around. There's a nine year old child here, and elders who can't even walk. What uprising could they start? And why would they assassinate your father out of the blue? Because they refused to accept that Hisu Gongji made a grave mistake, of course. A mistake for which he was declared guilty of the crime of murder by Golden Carp Tower, Jin Guang Yao said. It was then Hesu remembered the charges that had brought him to this eerie, hellish place. This is a setup. I didn't kill that cultivator from the Jin clan of Lan Ling. I'd never even seen him before. It remains to be seen if he's even a cultivator from your clan. He was stumped for a long while before he broke down in despairs. In despair. I don't know what happened. I have no idea at all. Yeah. However, no one here would listen to his defense. Sitting before him were two vicious villains who already considered him a dead man and were enjoying the sight of his last-ditch struggle. Jing Guang Yao leaned back with a smile and waved, Gag him! Gone, gag him. Knowing he could not escape death, a look of despair came over Hisu's face. He clenched his teeth and howled, Jing Guang Yao, you'll get what you deserve one day. Your father will rot to death among the whores sooner or later, and you, son of a whore, will end up no better than him. Shu Young was all chuckles and laughter as he listened with relish. Suddenly, a black shadow and a silver glare flashed through the air. Hisu covered his mouth and let loose a blood-curdling scream. Blood splattered all over the ground. Hisu's clan members cried and cursed, erupting into complete chaos, but remained firmly restrained despite their struggles. Shu Young stood before Hisu, who had fallen to the ground. He picked up a bloody object, which he tossed around in his hands. Then he snapped his fingers at two walking corpses on the sidelines and commanded, lock him up, lock him up in the cage. Alive? Jing Guang Yao asked. Xu Yang looked back, looked back and lifted a corner of his mouth into a smirk. Wei Wuxian never used living humans to refine corpses. I, on the other hand, would like to give it a try. You know the fan art I want? I really want fan art where um, the point of view is from behind them. And they're in the corpse refinery. And they're watching the fight. And they're like sitting. So they're like sitting, casually spectating, and like accepting tea, or like with the tea. I want that iconic shot of them watching like something, um, the the things fighting and like being disgusting and all that jazz, with them just like sitting. That's the fan art I want. I wonder if that exists. I'll have to go looking. <coughs> Where? There we go. Heeding his order, the two walking corpses dragged a still screaming Hisu by the legs and threw him into the metal cage at the center of the corpse refinery. Seeing their elder brother frantically banging his head against the metal bars, the boys and girls threw themselves at the cage and wailed. The cries were shrill and jarring to the ears, and Jing Guang Yao raised a hand to massage his temple. He looked like he might pick up the cup of tea and take a sip to calm himself, but then saw the bloated, purplish-red object at the bottom of the cup again as he lowered his head. He looked up again to see Shu Young jovially, jovially juggling that chunk of tongue. I didn't need to know. I should have known she was going to tell me anyway. After considering it for a moment, it suddenly hit him. You use that to brew tea? I have a whole jar of them, Shu Young said. You want some? Jin Guang Yao was dumbstruck. No, thank you. Clean yourself up a little and follow me to collect someone. We will go elsewhere for tea afterward. You know, it's so funny what... 
what one person finds disgusting and like just while at the same time finding other things like just like you know perfectly fine or like totally unbothered by something else so like Meng Yao tongue tea oh disgusting could not possibly you know having my father fucked to death just a natural matter of course darling As if just remembering something, he straightened his cap and accidentally touched the concealed bruise on his forehead. What's with that lump on your head? Shu Young asked again, gloating. As I said, it's a long story, Jin Guang Yao replied. Jin Guang Shan always dumped all his work on Jin Guang Yao so he could leave home to go indulge in women and drink all through the night. And Madame Jin would always rage all through Golden Carp Tower, infuriated by her husband's behavior. Jin Zixuan had once meditated between his parents, but now that he was gone, the once mediated, meditated, once mediated between his parents, but now that he was gone, the two of them were past the point of reconciliation. Every time Jin Guangsheng went out to fool around with women, he would have Jin Guangyao cover up his activities and make excuses for him. Unable to get at Jin Guangsheng, Madame Jin would instead turn her fury on Jin Guangyao smashing an incense burner on him today and splashing a cup of tea at him tomorrow. To, su to survive a few more days at Golden Carb Tower, Jin Guangyao had to personally search the various brothel brothels, collect Jin Guangshan, and escort him back in a timely manner. That's fucked up. Having done this kind of thing many times, Jin Guangyao already knew where he was most likely to find Jin Guangshan. His search led him to a small, resplendent building where he strode inside with his hands tucked politely behind his back. The floor manager of the main hall came over with an ingratiating smile to greet him, but Jin Guangyao raised his hand to indicate that service was not necessary. Xu Young swiped an apple from a customer's table and slowly followed Jin Guangyao up the stairs, during which he wiped the fruit on his chest before crunching down on it. Not long after, the sound of Jin Guangshan's laughter and the coquettish giggles of women, several of them, wafted near. Their voices chirped melodiously. Sect leader, what do you think of this? Does this flower look real when I paint it on my body? What's so great about knowing how to paint? Sect leader, look at my calligraphy. What do you think of it? when I write it on my body, is kind of what I assumed, where I assumed that was going. Jing Wanyao had long grown accustomed to this. He knew when he should appear and when he should not. He gestured to Shu Yang and stopped in his tracks. Shu Yang clicked his tongue, his expression one of impatience. Just as he was about to head downstairs to wait, he suddenly heard Jing Wangshan say in a gruff voice, Isn't it enough for girls to play with flowers and plants, to powder and doll themselves up? Why practice calligraphy? What a mood killer. Ooh, God, every time he opens his mouth. Oh. <coughs> oh. The women had intended to please Jing Guangshan, but his sudden statement turned the atmosphere awkward for a moment. Jin Guangyao froze a little, too. Not long after, someone said with a laugh, but I heard there was once a renowned courtesan and young Hmong who captivated the masses with her talents in the four forms and the four arts. Jin Guangshan was apparently dead drunk, as evidenced by his stumbling words. You can't put it that way, he slurred. I realize now that women should steer clear of that nonsense. Women who have read a little... Always think they're above, a cut above other women. They have lots of demands and the most unrealistic fantasies. It's most bothersome. We are in that moment. Shu Young leaned back against. Oh, lean. Mm, Shu Young leaned back against the window behind him and propped his arm on the window pane. He ate his apple and turned his head to look at the scenery outside. On the other hand, Jin Guang Yao's face seemed to have taken root. It was firm and unmoved, his eyes remaining crescents. The women in the loft were all smiles as they chimed in agreement. 
Jing Guangshan seemed to be remembering the past as he mumbled to himself. I bought her freedom and she found her way to Lan Ling. Who knows if she'd continue to pester me? She could have been popular for a few more years if she knew her place and stayed put, and she wouldn't have needed to worry about her daily expenses for the rest of her life. Why did she have to give birth to a son? What was she hoping to achieve by counting on the son of a prostitute? Sect Leader Jen, who are you talking about? asked the woman. What son? Son? answered Jing Guangshan, his voice light and airy. Ah, forget him. Sure, we won't talk about it. Since Sect Leader Jin doesn't like us to write and paint, we won't. How about we play with something else? Jing Wang Yao stood in the stairwell for an incense time. Xu Yang watched the scenery for an incense time as well, until the merry laughter upstairs gradually quieted down. After a while, Jing Wang Yao turned, turned around and started to walk slowly downstairs, wearing a calm and composed expression. Seeing this, Xu Yang casually tossed the apple core out of the window and sauntered down as well. Both of them walked down the street for a while. A moment later, Xu Yang burst into outright laughter. Jing Wang Yao halted in his tracks and asked in a frosty tone, What are you laughing at? Doubling over with laughter, Xu Yang said, You really should have found a mirror and looked at your face earlier. That was a horrible smile. It was so disgustingly fucking fake. Jing Wang Yao humphed. What does a little hooligan like you know? I have to smile, no matter how fake or disgusting it comes out. You asked for this, Xu Yang said lazily. If anyone dared to say I was raised by a whore, I'd go find his old hag and fuck her a few hundred times, then drag her to a brothel, brothel for others to fuck her a few hundred more times. Then we'd see who's the son of a whore. Easy peasy. Jing Wan Yao laughed too. I don't have such leisurely pursuits. You don't, but I do. And I don't mind standing in for you, Xu Yang said. Just say the word and I'll help you fuck them. That's not necessary, Jing Wan Yao said. Xu Gongxi should just shave, should just save his energy. Are you free in a few days? Whether I'm free or not, I'll still have to do it, no? Xu Yang quipped. Go to Yang Meng on my behalf, Jing Wang Yao said. Clean up a place for me and be thorough. As the saying goes, even fowl and dogs aren't spared when Xu Yang strikes, Xu Yang said. How do you still have misgivings about whether I'll be thorough? Jing Wang Yao glanced at him. I don't seem to have, th have heard that saying before. Night had already fallen and their surroundings were silent with a few pedestrians around. As the two of them walked and talked, they passed a roadside stall. The peddler was in the midst of listlessly cleaning up the small table when he looked up and suddenly yelled, jumping back. The shout and jump were so startling that even Jing Guang Yao froze slightly in shock. His hand swiftly moved to the hilt of Han Chung, who was, which was around his waist. When he saw it was just an ordinary peddler, he paid him no heed, but Xu Yang went forward and kicked over the stall without another word. The peddler was shocked and terrified. You again? Why? Didn't I tell you before? There's no why, Xu Yang answered with a smile. He was about to kick again when he felt a sharp pain in the back of his hand. Pupils shrinking, he swiftly backed up a few steps. He raised his hand, saw several bloody lashes on the back of it, then looked up. A Taoist cultivator, dressed in black, was giving him a frosty glare as he retracted his horsetail whisk. The cultivator was tall and slender, his features handsome with an air of cool detachment. He held a horsetail whisk in his hand and carried a long sword on his back. The tassel of the sword fluttered slightly in the, in the night breeze. Killing intent flashed in Xu Yang's eyes. He struck a palm out to attack, and the Taoist cultivator in black brandished his horsetail whisk, intending to repel the blow. But Xu Yang's strike was bizarre and unfathomable. The trajectory of his hand suddenly veered toward the black-clad cultivator's heart. The man frowned slightly and sidestepped the blow, but Xu Yang's palm grazed his left arm. Though clearly not physically hurt, the cultivator's expression suddenly frosted over with intense revulsion. This subtle change of expression did not escape Xu Yang's eyes. 
He let out a grim laugh and was about to make another move when a figure dressed in snow-white robes joined the fray. Jingguang Yao came forward and stood between the brawling parties. Song Zichen Daozhang, please stay your hand on my account. The peddler had long fled. Lan Fengjun, asked the Taoist cultivator in black. I am indeed that humble servant, Jingguang Yao said. Why is Lan Fengjun defending this overbearing and unreasonable person? Song, Zij <sighs> Song Zichen asked. Jing Wang Yao gave a pained smile, looking as if he had no choice in the matter. Sung Dao Chang, he is a guest cultivator of our Jing clan of Lan Ling. If he is a guest cultivator, why does he act in a manner unbefitting his position? Song Zi Chen asked. Jing Wang Yao coughed. Sung Dao Chang, you may be unaware, but he is eccentric and young as well. Please do not hold it against him. Just then, a clear, gentle voice rang out. Indeed, he's quite young. Like a sliver of moonlight piercing the night, a Taoist cultivator in white silently appeared beside the trio. He carried a horsetail whisk over his arm and a long sword on his back. He was slim and graceful and walked like he was stepping across floating clouds, his sleeves and sword tassel fluttering behind. Xiao Xing Chen Dao Hu Hai Chan Hu Hu Xiaoxing Chen Dao Zhang, Jing Guang Yao greeted. Xiaoxing Chen returned the greeting and said with a smile, I didn't expect Lan Feng Jun to remember me. We last met many months ago. Xiaoxing Chen Dao Zhang, Sheng Hu Hafa Sefan Sefan, they're really uh, testing me. Xiaoxing Chen Dao Zhang's Shuang Hua is a sword that shakes the world, said Jing Guang Yao. It would be stranger if I didn't remember, wouldn't it? Xiao Xingchen smiled, seemingly well aware that it was in Jin Guang Yao's nature to speak in an ingratiating way. Lan Feng Jun speaks too highly of me. His gaze then turned to Xu Yang. He may be young, but since he ranks among the guest cultivators, he must still exercise self-discipline and restraint. The Jin clan of Lan Ling is distinguished, after all, and should strive to set an example in many aspects. His black eyes shone, bright and gentle. As, and his gaze held no hint of reproach as he looked at Xu Yang. Even though he was giving advice, no offense was intended. Jin Guang Yao immediately and calmly took the out he had been provided, of course. Xu Yang snorted. Xiao Xing Chen did not lose his temper on hearing his derisive scoff, but sized him up for a while. After some thought, he said, Come to think of it, it seems to me that the way this boy strikes is rather. Vicious, Song Zichen finished for him in a frosty tone. Hearing this, Xu Yang laughed out loud. You say I'm still young, but how much older than me are you? You say my blows are vicious, but who was the one who lashed out at me first with his horsetail whisk? The way you two try to lecture others is really absurd. As he spoke, he held up the hand with the streaks of blood and shook it to demonstrate. He was clearly the one who'd first moved to wreck the stall, but was now distorting the truth and acting with self-righteous confidence. As is Xu Yang. Jing Guang Yao looked like he was caught between tears and laughter as he said to the two Taoist cultivators, Gentlemen, this Xiao Xing Chen couldn't help but smile. He's truly... Xu Yang narrowed his eyes. Truly what? Spit it out. Cheng Mei, shut up, Jing Guang Yao said mildly. Cheng Mei has a, a footnote by it. Xu Chengmei is Xu Yang's courtesy name. It is derived from a Confucian proverb describing the conduct of the ideal gentleman. Cheng Renjumei, help others accomplish good works. Oh my god. Like, not sense one of Lucifer's names being Lightbringer, have I encountered such dramatic irony in just a character's fucking name. 
On hearing that name, Xu Young's face promptly grew dark. Gentlemen, I am sorry about today, Jin Guangyao continued. For my sake, please do not hold it against him. Song Zichen shook his head. Xiao Xingchen patted him on the shoulder and said, Zichen, let's go. Song Zichen glanced at him and gave a slight nod of his head. Both of them bade Jin Guangyao farewell in unison and left. Shoulder to shoulder. I've been fine. I've been fine. I've been okay this whole time. Shu Young stared at their backs with a sinister gaze and clenched his teeth into a smile. Fucking foul cultivators. They didn't do anything to you, Jing Wangyao commented curiously. Why are you so resentful? Their breed of self-righteous hypocrisy disgusts me the most, Shu Young spat. Xiao Xing Chen clearly isn't that much older than me, but he's a nosy busybody. How annoying. And he even lectured me. Then there's that song guy, he sneered. All I did was graze him with my palm. What was that? What was with that stink eye he was giving me? One of these days, I'm going to gouge out his eyes and crush his heart. We'll see what he can do about it. That's where you're wrong, said Jin Guang Yao. Song Dao Zhang has a fixation with cleanliness and doesn't like physical contact with others. He's not targeting you specifically. Who are those two foul cultivators? Xu Yang asked. After all that fuss, you don't even know who they are? Jin Guang Yao asked. Those two are the height of their popularity right now. Shaoxing Chen, bright moon, cool breeze, ever distant. Song Zichen, dauntlessly scorns the snow and frost. Haven't you heard that phrase? Never, Xu Young said. Don't get it. The hell does it mean? Never mind if you never heard of it or don't understand it, said Jing Wang Yao. Either way, they are two virtuous gentlemen. Just don't provoke them. Why? Xu Young asked. Although, can we talk about someone like Xu Young just flat out not comprehending what, what like, their reputations are like he doesn't understand he can't even he's like what does that mean i don't get what that mean. that's not pure evil so i don't know what that means in fact it's quite the okay i'm fine i'm all right as the saying goes jing guang yao said it's better to offend a petty villain than a virtuous gentleman when a good man goes to war thank you Xu Young looked at him. Is there really any such saying, he asked, dubious. Of course, Zhang Guangyao said. When you offend a petty villain, you can simply kill them outright to avoid future trouble. The world will even applaud and celebrate you for it. But when you offend a virtuous gentleman, it gets trickier. Their kind is the most troublesome of all. They will chase you relentlessly and refuse to let it go. If you so much as lay a finger on them, you'll be condemned by the masses. So keep, so keep your distance from them. Fortunately, they thought you were just a little cocky due to your young age. They don't know what you've been doing all day long. If they did, there would be no end to it. Xu Young scoffed, playing it so safe. I'm not afraid of people like that. You're not, but I am, said Jin Guang Yao. Better to save yourself trouble than create it. Better to save yourself trouble than create it for yourself. Let's go. After only a few more steps, the two arrived at a fork in the road. The path on the right led to Golden Carp Tower, while the one on the left led to the corpse led to the corpse refinery. They smiled at each other and parted company. I am so fucking furious right now. Um Who told her that that was okay? Who said that was a thing that she could do? When she was sitting there in her house of scheming and geniusness, she's sitting there and this thought occurred to her. 
She was like, oh, what little side stories could I do? What little things and tidbits and characters could I follow for, like, you know, little bits and bobs, whatever? Like, what could I do? Like, ooh, hoo, hoo. And she was like, you know what I could do? I could just dramatize when Shu Young first met and clocked. She's got to be stopped. I realized like nobody knows like where she is, who she is. She's very good at like staying hidden and like kudos kudos to her for that. But at the same time, I need to track the bitch down. I've got words to exchange with her. Deeply unfair. Page 287. Extra story number four called Gatecrasher. It all started on one particular night three days ago. That night, a tired and drunk young Master Chin had returned to his residence after a social engagement. He'd been settling down to rest when he suddenly heard banging. Someone was pounding on the main doors of the Chin residence, or rather, smashing their fist against them. Chin. 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 For some reason, the first place my brain wants to hop is that one clan. That one clan, but you, you know what I mean. Um, that one clan that got, like, totally wiped out by Shu Young. In the show, I can... It's when... Um, it's actually, I think, when we first meet Song Lan and Xing Chen. I believe so. Like, those people? I could be very, very wrong, though. I could very easily be wrong. So, like, I don't actually really think. But that's the first place that my brain went. The servant, who, the servant keeping the gate had groggily acknowledged the guest and gotten up to take a look, a lantern in hand. But just as he was about to ask who it was, Whoever was knocking suddenly went into a frenzy, slamming into the doors as if they had gone mad. Literally slamming. The bolt holding the door shut had creaked with the force. And then came a noise, like ten metal claws raking away at the door panels. The commotion was so loud that the courtyard quickly became crowded with servants who had been startled awake. They raised their oil lamps and clubs and lanterns, trading looks with one another as they waited for their master to appear which he finally did, sword in hand and draped in only an outer robe. Young Master Chin drew his sword with an echoing shing and bellowed, Who's there? The scratching on the doors immediately grew louder. Young Master Chin pointed to a servant huddled in a corner, in a corner with a broom raised. You, climb up and take a look outside, Young Master Chin ordered. The servant didn't dare defy him. Ashen-faced, he slowly climbed the wall, looking beseechingly back at Young Master Chin all the while. The only response he got was more impatient urging. Finally, he set both hands on the tiled eaves and poked his head out and poked his head over with fear and trepidation. He had taken only one look before he plunged headfirst to the ground. He said the thing knocking at the doors was a monster in funeral clothes, completely drenched in blood with disheveled hair. Young Master Chin finished recounting, it wasn't a living person. Wei Wu Shen and Lan Wang Ji exchanged a look. Well, Lan Shijui asked, Young Master Chin, do you have a more detailed description? Young Master Chin was not part of the cultivation world and had found the right people purely by accident. He knew that the gentlemen before him were cultivators, but not who they were. All the same, Lan Wang Ji's frosty demeanor gave him an extraordinary, otherworldly air, and Wei Wu Shen looked quick-witted, as if he had everything worked out. And while Lan Shijui was young, there was a touch of class and elegance to his bearing. Gets that from one of his dads. As such, young Master Chin did not dare snub him. This better be, like, some feel-good ghost hunter -y bullshit that we deserve after that motherfucking bomb that she dropped on us. I'm just saying. As such, young Master Chin did not dare snub him. 
No, that servant is an idiot and a coward. He passed out after taking a single look, and I had to pinch his philtrum for a while before he came back around. Do you think I could count on him to get a clearer look at the thing? Allow me to ask a question, Wei Wushan said. Please, young Master Chin answered. It seems you had someone else look on your behalf. Didn't you look for yourself? Wei Wushan asked. No. A pity. What about it is a pity? From what you've told us, that was probably a fierce corpse knocking on your door. When a fierce corpse comes calling, nine times out of ten, it's there for a particular reason, Wei Wushan explained. If you had taken a look with your own eyes, you might have recognized it as an old acquaintance. Perhaps I'm that one person out of ten, young Master Chin said. And besides, even if it was there for a particular person... Whoop. He did previously say that when Wei Wushan said it's there for a particular reason, person. My bad. Even if it was there for a particular person, that person might not necessarily be me, right? Wei Wushan nodded and said with a smile, sure. The creature clawed at the door until daybreak. Young Master Chin continued, when I went out early in the morning to take a look, the door was already mangled beyond recognition. Wei Wuxian and Lan Wangji circled around to the entrance of the complex, and Lan Chijui followed them, observing carefully. The main doors of the Qin residence were covered in hundreds of harrowing scratch marks. Each swipe had left five ghastly streaks in its wake, ranging from a few centimeters to a meter or so. The door was indeed mangled beyond recognition. The marks had undoubtedly been made by human hands, but no matter how you looked at it, the gouges hardly resembled anything that could be accomplished by a living human's fingernails. To get back on topic, Yang Master Chin said, since both Gangji are men of the cultivation world, do you have any way do you have a way to drive away this evil creature? However, Wei Wushan answered, That's not necessary. Lan Shijui found his response strange, but didn't speak out of turn. Young Master Chin found it strange as well and parroted him. Not necessary. Not necessary, Wei Wushan confirmed. The moment a residence is constructed and comes under someone's ownership, it attains the inherent purpose of sheltering inhabitants and repelling outsiders. The entrance is a natural barrier. It can not only keep out humans, but also ward off non-humans. You're the rightful master of this place, so evil spirits can't invade as long as you don't invite them in with your words or actions. Judging by the residual evil chi on the front door, the fierce corpse or malicious ghost that came calling on your residence wasn't rare or special. One set of doors will be enough to keep it out. Young Master Chin was still skeptical. Is this barrier really that powerful? Yes, Lan Wangji answered. I love that whole ass fucking paragraph of Wei Wuxian explaining the situation. And then Lan Wangji, yes. God. Consistency. Wei Wuxian said one boot on the threshold. It is. Furthermore, a residence's threshold. See, he's still going. A residence's threshold forms another barrier. Reanimated corpses have stagnant blood that doesn't circulate, and their tendons are rigid. All they can do is hop stiffly around. Unless that walking corpse had amazingly strong legs in life and could leap a meter into the air, it couldn't get over the threshold, even if you left the doors wide open. <clears throat> Still not reassured, young Master Chin asked, Is there nothing else I need to buy? Residence protection, talis residence protection talismans, exorcism swords, and so on. I'm willing to pay a high price. Money is no problem. Replace the door bolt with a new one, Lan Wangji said. Young Master Chin did not know what to say to that. His skeptical expression seemed to indicate he thought this suggestion had been made purely to placate him. So Wei Wushan added, It's up to you whether you replace it. Do as you see fit, young Master Chen. Please feel free to consult us again if there are any further developments. Oh my god! Your friendly neighborhood Ghostbusters! Ah! Oh! Can you imagine if the Ghostbusters were that? You know, I'm fine. It's fine. Upon leaving the Qin residence, they walked for a while. Wei Wuxian and Lan Wangji strolled side by side, peppering in snippets of conversation every now and then. One could say they had somewhat pulled away from the cultivation world. If they had nothing of importance to attend to, they would roam aimlessly for a few days, half a month, a whole month. Wei Wuxian had long known Lan Wangji's reputation for appearing where there is chaos, and hadn't thought it would be a tough job. 
but now that he was tacking along, he realized it was a test of patience. Not because it was tough, but rather it was too easy. Yeah, you know, kind of like being in a uh, um, uh, tech uh, blah, 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 uh, help center, you know? Have you tried turning it off and turning it back on again? Except with ghosts. When he had gone on night hunts in the past, he'd favored strange and dangerous locations where he could experience a variety of adventures that were naturally full of turns and twists. However, Lan Wangji was not picky. He did what he ought to do, and it inevitably ended up ended with some commonplace night hunt target that was unremarkable by Wei Wuxian standards. Case in point, this fierce corpse that had come knocking. Compared to the creatures Wei Wuxian used to hunt, it was boring indeed. Even other cultivators might consider dealing with it to be a waste of time and talent. But even if the case itself wasn't enticing, Wei Wuxian was with Lan Wangji. It was relaxing and idyllic to enjoy each other's company. Stop! Lan Shijui quietly followed them, leading Little Apple by the reins. After much pondering, he couldn't help but ask, Heng Wanjun, Wei Chenbei, is it okay to just leave young Master Chen's house like that? It's fine, Lan Wangji said. Wei Wuxian laughed. Shijui, do you think I was just spouting nonsense to trick people? Lan Shijui quickly denied it and coughed to clear his throat. Not at all. That's not what I meant. What I'm trying to say is... Oh, hello. I think I accidentally... No. Oh, no, there was an ellipsis. I didn't see. What I'm trying to say is, a residence's door might indeed be able to keep evil out, but that residence's door is about to fall apart. Is it really all right to not even give him a single talisman? Wei Wuxian gave him a weird look. Well, duh? Oh, Lan Shijui said. Of course it's not all right, Wei Wuxian said. What, huh? Then why, Lan Shijui wondered. Because, Wei Wuxian explained, young Master Chen was lying. What? Lan Wangji nodded slightly. On the other hand, Lan Shijui was somewhat astonished. How could Wei Chenpei tell? I've only met young Master Chin once, so I can't say for sure, but that guy is intransigent and cold-hearted, Lan Wangji finished. Ooh! Damn! Ooh! The kind of cutting opinion that only a gay man can have. Wei Bushan made a noise of agreement, more or less. In any case, he's no coward. The situation that night was bizarre, but based on what he described, not bizarre enough to frighten someone out of their mind. Would it have been that hard for him to climb up on the eaves and take a look outside? Although he acknowledged the point, Lan Shijui said, but he kept insisting that he didn't take a single look. Exactly, Wei Wuxian said. If someone was pounding like crazy on your doors in the middle of the night, it'd be normal to sneak a peek. Everyone's born curious, and that guy isn't the timid type, but he insists he didn't see anything. Isn't that strange? Wholly agreed, Lan Wangji said. As they say, great minds think alike. Wei Wuxian smiled and stroked his chin as he continued speaking. Besides, even though the claw marks the fierce corpse left on the front door looked scary, the evil chi and scent of blood weren't all that strong. It definitely didn't come to kill for revenge. Of that much, I can be sure. What's really going on remains to be seen. In that case, why doesn't Wei Chambe summon the fierce corpse to ask it directly? Lan Shijui asked. Nah. Huh? Can you draw uh can you draw a spirit attraction flag without letting blood? I'm too weak and frail, Wei Wuxian stated with self righteous confidence. Wei Chenbe, you can use my blood, Lan Shijui assured him, thinking he genuinely couldn't be bothered to shed some blood. To his surprise, Wei Wuxian only sputtered a laugh in response. Shijui, he said. That's not actually the problem. We brought you with us to gain experience, right? Lan Shijui was momentarily taken aback. But of course, I can call the fierce corpse right over and tell it to get lost. Wei Wuxian continued, but could you do the same? When he heard this explanation, Lan Shijui promptly understood. He and the other juniors of the Lan Clan of Gusu had become too dependent on Wei Wuxian after everything they'd gone through together. Summoning a corpse and asking it questions while it was under one's command might be the quickest method, but not everyone could manage it, and Lan Shijui did, did not cultivate the demonic path, making it inadvisable for him to learn too much about its arts. What experience did he stand to gain if Wei Wuxian simply used his usual methods to deftly and easily resolve the issue, as he always did? 
This time, Wei Wuxian and Lan Wangji meant to lead him through a more standard investigative process, teaching him how cases like these should be resolved. Ah! Stop, stop. I love this so much. I love this so much. Ooh. So, Lan Shijui said, what Hang Wenjun and Wei Chen Bin mean is, since young Master Chen refused to tell the truth, we should simply leave him for the time being in order to give him a good scare? That's right, Wei Wuxian confirmed. Just wait and see. The door bolt can last another two days or so. Your clan's Han Wang Jun told him to replace it with a new one, which was a very conscientious suggestion. But young Master Chin doesn't seem to care. Then again, if he's really hiding something important, even replacing it with ten new bolts will do no good. The creature will come again, sooner or later. Surprisingly enough, the bolt didn't even last one night. The next day, a glum-looking young Master Chin called on Wei Wuxian and Lan Wangji once more. Prominent clans in the cultivation world owned many estates across the land. The three of them were currently staying in the small, elegant building owned by the land clan of Gusu, which was called the Little Bamboo Abode. Young Master Chin had arrived very early in the morning and come upon Lan Chijui pulling a donkey by the reins. Poor Lan Chijui was trying his very hardest to drag Little Apple away and prevent it from gnawing on the bamboo. The moment he turned around, he saw young Master Chen looking at him, the corners of his mouth twitching. Lan Chijui's face went red as he tossed the rope aside and invited young Master Chen into the house. He gingerly knocked on the two seniors' bedroom door to inform, to inform them of the guest's arrival. Upon seeing a neatly dressed Lan Wangji quietly open the door and shake his head, Lan Chijui knew Wei Chenbei would not be waking any time soon. Lan Chijui was in a bind. In the end, he steeled himself to break the clan rule that forbade lying and claimed that his senior wasn't feeling well and was still resting. He couldn't possibly tell young Master Chin the truth, which was, Wei Chenbe wants to sleep, so Hang Wan Jun told you to wait. Wei Wuxian slept until it was late in the morning, and when he woke, he could only force himself to get out of bed after receiving a multitude of caresses and embraces from Lan Wangxi. Well, of course. Eyes still closed as he washed up, he put on Lan Wangji's inner robe by mistake. Its sleeves were a few centimeters longer than those of the outer robe and had been rolled up several times, making for quite an unbecoming sight. Fortunately, young Master Chin was too preoccupied to notice as he dragged the trio away. Was this inspiration for what they did in the show? Did they legit read this and were like, we could, we could do something. We could slip that right in under the censor's noses. Oh. The Chin, hang on. The Chin's, the Chin residents, whoo, the Chin residents' entrance doors were tightly shut. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, no, yeah. The Chin residence's entrance doors were tightly shut. Young Master Chin stepped up, wrapped the door knocker, and discarded pleasantries to get straight to the point. I felt a little more at ease after your advice yesterday, but I still couldn't sleep last night. And so I read for a while in the main hall with the doors shut, keeping an ear open for movement outside. Shortly after, a servant opened the front doors and welcomed the trio into the courtyard. As soon as they took the steps down, Wei Wuxian was slightly taken aback by the shocking sight they beheld. Large, vivid red footsteps were scattered all over the courtyard. That thing came again last night, young Master Chin continued gloomily. It clawed and slammed against the front door again for almost an hour, making quite a racket. I was growing more and more irritated at the commotion, but then I heard a sudden crack. Its banging had broken the bolt. The hair on young Master Chin's neck had stood on end at the sound of the bolt snapping. He'd rushed over and peeped through a crack in the main hall's wooden door. The front door across... The front door across the courtyard had been flung open. Lit by dim moonlight, he had seen a figure jumping around before the entrance of the, of the Chin residence, like a log fitted with a spring underfoot. It hopped like that for a while, but never managed to hop inside. Young Master Chin heaved a small sigh of relief, thinking the creature really was like how Wei Wuxian had described it during the day, lacking functional tendons and circulation, stiff all over. It couldn't bend its legs, so it would never be able to jump across the high threshold of his front doors. 
But before he could fully exhale, he saw the figure bounding around the entrance suddenly spring high into the air. In a flash, it had leapt through the front door. Young Master Chin had whirled around and pressed his back against, against the door of the main hall. The evil creature, having crossed the threshold and entered the courtyard, continued to hop straight ahead. Why is this Loki creepy? It's like, it's like, like an evil pogo stick. Why is it creepy? In no time, it had thrown itself at the doors of the main hall. Young Master Chin had felt the impact through the wood pressed against his back. Realizing with a start that there was only a single door between him and the creature, he had hastily scrambled away. The moonlight cast the evil creature's shadow on the paper windows, young Master Chin said. It couldn't come in, so it circled around the hall, leaving behind all these footprints in the courtyard. Gentlemen, it's not that I doubt you, but you clearly said that thing couldn't jump in. Wei Wuxian stepped on the threshold. Generally speaking, a corpse certainly couldn't manage such a jump once rigor mortis set in. With no working tendons or blood circulation, the dead can't bend their legs. You can ask any of the other any of the other cultivation clans, and they'll all tell you the same thing. Young Master Chin opened his arms wide, as if to show him the red footprints all over the courtyard. Then how do you explain this? There's only one possible explanation. It wasn't an ordinary creature that entered your residence, Wei Wuxian said. Think back for a moment. Did you notice anything odd when you took a look at that fierce corpse last night? Looking upset, young Master Chen thought about it for a while before saying, Now that I think about it, there was something strange about the thing's posture when it jumped. How so? Wei Wuxian asked. It seemed like... Young Master Chen trailed off in hesitation. Lan Wangji, who had already done a lap of the courtyard, provided an answer in a mild tone as he walked back to Wei Wuxian's side. It had a limp. That's right. Young Master Chin promptly confirmed, but then immediately grew dubious. How did you know that? Len Shijui had been wondering the same thing, but he'd always understood there was nothing Hang Wan Jun didn't know. Rather than reacting with doubt, he waited with quiet curiosity for the answer. The footprints on the ground, Len Wangji said. Wei Wuxian bent, and Lan Shijui followed suit, squatting with him to scrutinize the marks. A couple of glances was enough for Wei Wuxian. He looked up at Len Wangji. A one-legged corpse? Lan Wangji nodded and Wei Wuxian stood up. No wonder it was able to jump over the threshold. These footprints are uneven and of varying depths. The walking corpse has one broken leg. He thought for a moment, then continued. Do you think it was broken before or after his death? Before, Lan Wangji answered. Hmm. Wei Wuxian hummed in agreement. If it had been after, it wouldn't matter which body parts were broken. They were freely discussing the matter now, but Lan Shijui couldn't keep up. He was quickly forced to call for a timeout. Hold on, Heng Wanju, Wei Chenbei. Let me sort this out. You're saying that because this fierce corpse has a broken leg and walks with a limp, it's far easier for it to jump over the threshold than it would be for a two-legged, um, intact fierce corpse? Young Master Chin was obviously thinking the same thing. Did I hear that right? Yes, Len Wangshi answered. Young Master Chin looked like he found the idea absurd. Isn't that like saying a person with one leg can run faster than a person with two? The couple were involved in their discussion, but Wei Wuxian spared a moment to answer with a smile. You've got it wrong, but maybe you'll understand if I put it another way. Some people are blind in one eye, so they take extra care of their remaining eye. Despite being partially blind, their eyesight might not necessarily be worse than that of someone with two working eyes. In fact, it might even be better. Similarly, if someone lost the use of their left arm, their right arm might develop extraordinary strength in the, in the long run. Maybe even to the point that their right arm possessed twice the strength of an ordinary person's. Interesting theory. Lance Joy understood now, and because the fierce corpse had broken its leg while it was alive, it hops constantly on one leg after death. Therefore, it wound up able to jump much higher than walking corpses with two legs. Precisely, Wei Wuxian said cheerfully. Lance Joy made a mental note of this, finding it rather interesting. It's all my fault for quarreling with my wife yesterday, young Master Chin said irritably. Dealing with those domestic affairs took up most of the day and went on well into the night, and I didn't have the time to repair the main doors. 
I'll reinforce them now and make them as impregnable as an iron fortress. However, Lan Wangji shook his head. That will be of no use. Precedent must not be set. Young Master Chin startled, as that did not sound like an auspicious statement. What do you mean by that? It's trade jargon, said Wei Wuxian. It means some defensive measures can only be used once against evil spirits. They won't work a second time. If you had rushed to repair the doors yesterday, they would have held up a while. But if a creature manages to get through once, its path will be unimpeded in the future. Young Master Chin was both shocked and regretful. Then, what should I do? Simply sit tight, Lan Wangji said. <coughs> no need to panic, Wei Wuxian reassured. It might be able to enter through the main entrance, but it won't be able to get through the second gate. Your mansion's like a city. Only the first gate has been breached right now, and there are still two more after that. Two more? Which two? The door of socialization, the door of privacy, Lan Wangji said. Your main hall and your bedroom, Wei Wuxian clarified. The group had long since crossed the courtyard as they continued their discussion. They strode into the main hall and took their seats. But even after a long time had passed, no one came to serve tea. For some reason, all the servants were gone. Young Master Chin shouted for a while before someone finally came, but he was quick to kick the person away as soon as they arrived. Having indulged that opportunity to vent his anger, he brightened a little. Unwilling to give up, he pressed, Can't you give me some talisman to suppress it? Don't worry, gentlemen, payment really isn't a problem. Of course he was unaware these three never cared about payment when they went on night hunts. But that depends on how you want to suppress it, Wei Wushan said. What do you mean? And so Wei Wushan began his spiel. One second, then. Suppression, he began. <clears throat> only treats the symptoms, not the root cause. If you want to stop an evil creature from entering through the door, just change the talisman twice a month and you'll be fine. But it'll still be able to approach your house and claw your door. I reckon you'll eventually be changing front doors even faster than talismans. If you want the evil spirit to back off and stay away for good, the high-caliber talismans you'd need are, more, are, are complex to draw and expensive to make, and you'd have to change them every seven days. On top of that, its resentment will only grow more powerful and longer the longer it's suppressed. Lan Wangji sat in silence and listened as Wei Wuxian spouted nonsense. It was true that suppression was not a good strategy in the long term, but suppression and expulsion talismans were not as complex and laborious to produce or utilize as Wei Wuxian was making them out to be. But when it came to the art of making up nonsense, no one could rival Wei Wuxian's eloquence. Lan Shijui was a brilliant student, and even he was dumbfounded by his speech, and was nearly led to believe him. Young Master Chen couldn't help but grumble inwardly as he listened to how troublesome Wei Wuxian was making suppression out to be, as if he'd have no end of trouble if he opted for it. He kept glancing over at Lan Wangji, who sat drinking his tea with his head lowered. But Lan Wangji's expression didn't seem to suggest Wei Wuxian was only exaggerating things to frighten him, so Young Master Chen had no choice but to believe. Isn't there a way to resolve this once and for all? Wei Wuxian jumped on this opportunity at once. That depends on you, Young Master Chin. Why? Young Master Chin asked. I can make you a specially tailored talisman, Wei Wuxian said, but whether I will do so depends on whether you're willing to answer my question truthfully. What question? Did you know that fierce corpse when it was alive? Wei Wuxian asked. After a long silence, young Master Chin finally answered, Yes. The couple exchanged a look while Lance Chewy perked up. The couple. Please elaborate, Wei Wuxian said. It was only after some contemplation that young Master Chin slowly said, There isn't really much to explain. I don't know much about him. I grew up in my grandmother's house in a mountainous village in a faraway province. He was one of the household servants. Because we were similar in age, we played together growing up. 
That's called a childhood friend, Wei Wuxian said. How can you not know much about him? Because we drifted apart when we got older, young Master Chin said. Think back, Wei Wuxian urged. Did you ever do anything that offended that servant in any way? There was one instance, young Master Chin answered, but I don't know how badly I offended him. Tell us, Lan Wangji said. The servant had served year-round at my grandmother's side, young Master Chin began. He was efficient and similar in age to me, her grandson, so my grandmother liked him and often praised him for his intelligence. For that reason, he grew a bit arrogant. He often tagged along behind our clan's juniors with no understanding of the distinction between master and servant. Later, my grandmother even let him attend school with us. One day, the teacher had given us a difficult assignment. Someone came up with an, an, with an answer during discussion, and everyone in class was praising it when that servant suddenly said it was wrong. He'd only been attending class for a month or two at the time, while the clan juniors had been studying for two or three years. Naturally, there was no need to discuss who was right or wrong, so someone promptly dismissed him. But he was stubborn, adamant that the previous person was wrong, wanting to show us how he had achieved his conclusion. Eventually, the dispute annoyed everyone in class, and we all booted him out. At this point, Lan Shijui couldn't help but say, King Master Chen, even if he had annoyed the rest of you, he hadn't done anything unreasonable. Why boot him out? It sounds like a bunch of juniors from your clan provoked him, Wei Wuxian commented. Did you play a special role? Otherwise, he'd have sought out the entire group, not just you. I was the first to tell him to get out, young Master Chen answered. It was just an offhand comment, but everyone had long been unhappy with him, and the situation got out of hand. That guy had quite a temper, too. After he returned home, he told my grandmother he wouldn't be attending school anymore, and true to his word, he never went again. I'll ask two more questions, and you must answer them truthfully, Wei Wuxian said. Go ahead, young Master Chin said. First question, said Wei Wuxian, with a particularly bright glint in his eyes. You said that... Someone came up with an answer. Was that someone you? After a pause, young Master Chin asked, Is that information relevant? Well then, second question, whose answer was right and whose was wrong? Looking sour, young Master Chin, so, I uh, mean, yeah, yeah, no, I love that. Well then, like, Wuxian was like, that answers my question, actually. Uh, first question. Looking sour, young Master Chin shook out his sleeves and answered dispassionately. It's an old story from years ago. Please excuse me for not remembering everything vividly. But in all fairness, who has never let their feelings get the better of them in their youth, or done inexplicable things, or met strange people? Let us not dwell on it. I merely wish to settle this case once and for all, and as soon as possible. Sure thing, Wei Wuxian answered with a happy smile. I get it. I get it. When did that person pass away? Lan Wangji asked. About two years ago, I guess, young Master Chin replied. Two years, Wei Wuxian parroted. Not too bad. It's not an old corpse, but not a fresh one either. How did he die? Suicide? No, I heard he'd been drink out drinking and was running around in the middle of the night. He didn't watch his footing and fell to his death. Not suicide, then. That makes the situation slightly better. Young Master Chin, is that all? Yes. In that case, please head back inside. The talismans will be delivered to your residence later. Please keep us in the loop if you remember anything else. After the three of them had returned to the little bamboo abode, Lan Shijui shut the door behind him and turned around to expel a breath. Young Master Chin is honestly... Honestly... Two years, said Lan Wangji all of a sudden. Yeah, two years is a little strange, Wei Wuxian agreed. Strange, Lan Shijui repeated. Wei Wuxian retrieved a blank sheet of talisman paper from his sleeve. Hate-fueled evil spirits that want to seek vengeance for the grievances they've suffered usually start haunting on the night of the seventh day of their death. Ones that wait a bit longer and start haunting within a year are fairly common, too, since he'd already turned, since he'd already turned into a fierce corpse. Why drag his feet for two years before coming? Lan Shijui ventured a guess. Perhaps it hadn't managed to find young Master Chin's address after he moved? 
He felt a slight chill run down his spine as he imagined the corpse knocking on the doors of one household after another every night, peeping inside to see if it was the home of young Master Chin. But Wei Wuxian said, that couldn't be the case. The fierce corpse and young Master Chin are old acquaintances. It could easily find him by following his scent. Plus, if things went down, like you suggested, it would have hit up at least a few wrong houses in its search for young Master Chin, and there would have been more than one strange report of a fierce corpse banging on doors. Lin Jen, you're better read than I am and have a better memory. Have you come across any similar accounts over the past two years? There has been nothing related, Lan Wangji stated, as Wei Wuxian entered the study. Exactly, said Wei Wuxian, taking out a brush. Lan Jen, I can't find the cinnabar ink. I even used it last night. Have any of you seen it around? Lan Wangji entered the room as well and found the ink. Wei Wuxian dipped the tip of his brush twice in the fine little dish, then poured himself a cup of tea and sat by the table. With tea in his left hand and a brush in his right, he drew wild, bold strokes on the talisman paper in one motion without looking, speaking to Lan Wangji as he worked. Okay, hot boy shit. I see you. If you don't remember, there must not be any such incidents. So there must be another reason why it didn't lay its hands on young Master Chin for two years. There, the drawing's done. The talisman's cinnabar ink was still wet when he handed it to Lan Shijui. Go deliver this to him. Lan Shijui took the talisman and looked it over, but he couldn't decipher a single word. He had never seen such a frenzied, chaotic, and arbitrary spell in any book, so he couldn't help but ask, Wei Chenbei, this couldn't be something you just randomly scrawled out, could it? Of course it is, Wei Wuxian answered. Lan Shijui was struck speechless. I never look when I draw talismans. Wei Wuxian laughed. Don't worry, it'll definitely work. Speaking of which, Sijui, you don't like young Master Chin, do you? Lan Sijui considered this question for a moment. I don't know, he said honestly. He hasn't done anything evil or heinous, but people I have a harder time... Oh, but perhaps. But perhaps I have a harder time getting along with people with temperaments like this. I didn't really like his tone when he said servant. That's my son! He paused, but Wei Wuxian was completely unaware of his hesitation. That's common, he said. Most people look down on servants. Even servants sometimes look down on themselves. Why are you two looking at me like that? He had to stop midway through his sentence, torn between laughter and tears. Hold it. Have you two misunderstood? Is this even a comparable situation? Lotus Pier wasn't your regular household. I hit Jiang Cheng way more than he hit me when we were kids. Lan Wangji made no comment, but instead gave him a silent squeeze. Wei Wuxian couldn't suppress a smile as he returned the hug, stroking down his back. Stop it! Stop it! It's everything I wanted. Everything in a post-canon context. I just wanted some ghost busting with some couple shit. And Lan Shijui. This just... <sighs> Ugh. Lan Shijui cleared his throat, relieved to see Wei Wuxian so calm. He didn't seem at all sensitive about the word servant, as he'd expected. But he'll likely come back, Wei Wuxian continued. Lan Shijui was taken aback. It won't be resolved tonight? He did not tell us the full story, Lan Wangji stated. Yeah, Wei Wuxian said, and that's not the first time he's pulled that. There's nothing we can do. People like that, you just have to unearth the story bit by bit. Let's see if he'll spill it out after tonight. As expected, young Master Chin came again the next day while Lan Shijui was training with his sword in the little bamboo aboard, abode's courtyard. The moment he arrived, he shouted right in Lan Shijui's face, I don't care! Please wait, young Master Chin, Lan Shijui hurriedly said. Both of my seniors are sleep cultivating. They are at a critical juncture and must not be disturbed. <laughs> Hearing this, young Master Chin did not forcibly barge inside, but instead took all his pent-up resentment out on Lan Shijui. I don't want to hear about treating the symptoms or the root cause. I want this thing to never come looking for me again. Young Master Chin had still been unable to sleep last night, so he'd hung up a lantern in the main hall and done some night, and done some night reading. Not long after, the fierce corpse, that one servant, had come as usual. Still unable to enter the house, it had jumped here and there outside the do door. <coughs> Slamming into it from time to time. 
Surprisingly, the wooden windows and paper held up against its blows without falling apart. Not long later, the commotion receded into the distance. Young Master Chen hadn't gotten a good night's sleep for a few days in a row. Unable to hang on any longer, fatigue washed over him in an unguarded moment. His head drooped and he fell sound asleep, still seated. He drifted off for an unknown, unknown length of time when he suddenly heard three clear, crisp knocks at the door. His whole body had tensed and he straightened his back as he was startled awake. My lord, a woman's voice called from outside the door. Young Master Chen had only just woken and was still so disoriented that he wouldn't have recognized his own father. When he'd heard Madam Chin's voice, he got up and moved to open the door, but he had only taken a few steps before he suddenly recalled something. Madam Chin had been tearfully arguing with him over the past few days. Just a day ago, she had packed her things and left for her parents' house, declaring she couldn't live like this anymore. Since her fear had only just propelled her to leave, how would she have found the courage to come back alone in the middle of the night? That's fucking creepy. The graceful, womanly shadow on the paper window did indeed resemble his wife's silhouette, but young Master Chin didn't dare act hastily. He silently drew his sword. My lady, why have you returned? You're not angry anymore? I'm back, the woman outside the door. Ooh, the woman outside the door had replied in a flat tone. I'm not angry. Open the door. This fucking creep bullshit. Young Master Chin didn't dare do so without careful consideration. He pointed his sword at the door. My lady, it's safer for you to return at your father to your father's place. What if the creature has not left yet, but is lurking around here? There was a long stretch of silence outside the door. Young Master Chin's hand was slick with cold sweat as he gripped his sword. All of a sudden, the woman shrieked at the top of her lungs. Open the door now! There's a ghost here! Let me in! The thing outside the door that called itself Madam Chin had clawed at the paper windows as it screamed. Young Master Chin had felt a chill run down its back. Gripping the talisman Wei Wuxian had delivered to him, he felt a sudden burst of courage and charged out the door with sword in hand. And then a bunch of things smashed into my face and knocked me out, Young Master Chin finished. What knocked you out? Wei Wuxian asked. You know what that moment remind me of? That really creepy moment? If stuff like that, like, Simple, yet still creepy stuff like that kind of like fucks you up. You love shit like that. This is for my horror fans. Um, look up Markiplier's um, Don't Open the Door. It's either called that or Open the Door. But just go click. Go just go click. Go click. Go click on that video on YouTube in Markiplier. He's one of the biggest YouTubers ever. Um, open the door. Don't open the door. One of the two. Try don't open the door. Yeah. Yeah. Ba -ba -da -ba. Young Master Chen pointed a finger at the table. Wei Wuxian looked and was beside himself with amusement. Why was it fruit? <laughs> Young Master Chen fumed. How would I know? Of course you do. No one knows except you, Wei Wuxian said. Evil spirits are very vindictive. Did you ever fling fruit at him? Young Master Chin looked glum and said nothing. Seeing his expression, Wei Wuxian knew his guess wasn't far off. However, he also knew he'd be reluctant to admit to admit to it if he'd been in young... <laughs> mm, mm, I'm having too much fun. Just one second. However, he also knew he'd be reluctant to admit it too if he'd been in young, men, young Master Chin's shoes, so he didn't pry any further. As expected, young Master Chin changed the topic when he opened his mouth again. I sent someone to my father-in-law's place to make an inquiry, and my wife did not leave their house last night. That creature was one with the specific power to break the protective barriers of human residences, Wei Wuxian explained. It's been only rarely documented in the notes of our forebears and ancient books. It doesn't harm humans directly, but it can imitate the voices and shapes of people close to the residence's owner. It usually works with evil spirits that are unable to step through the door on their own, helping them dupe you into inviting them in. That fierce corpse sure found itself a good helper. 
Whatever it is, the details are pointless to me, young Master Chin said. Gongji, the second door has been breached, and this thing has entered my residence's main hall. Dare I ask whether you still plan to declare that nothing needs to be done? Young Master Chin, let's be reasonable here, Wei Wuxian said. You were the one who opened the second door. Had it not been for that talisman I gave you, I don't dare comment on what state you'd be in today. Young Master Chin was momentarily struck dumb, then flew into a rage. If this continues, am I going to see that thing standing at the head of my bed the next time I wake up? I don't know. Would you ever have sex with him when he was alive? If you really want to have a good night's sleep, you'd better hurry and think about whether there's anything else you forgot to tell us. Wei Wuxian said. This time, you mustn't hold anything back. You have to know that tonight, <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to scare you, but tonight it'll come calling at your bedroom door. Left with no choice, young Master Chen could only tell them about another incident. The last time I saw that person was when I'd returned to my hometown to perform memorial rituals for my parents and ancestors. When I returned to my former family residence to offer my respects, I had been wearing a jade pendant. He had recognized it as something my grandmother owned while she was alive and asked to borrow it to take a look. I handed it over, assuming he probably wanted to reminisce about my grandmother. Before long, it was gone. Gone, meaning, Wei Wuxian asked, did he lose it or did he sell it? Young Master Chen hesitated for a moment. I don't know. I had initially thought he sold it and was lying about losing it when he returned, but when he didn't continue, Wei Wuxian patiently probed. But what? Len Wanji's expression remained apathetic throughout. Please speak your mind. But now that I think about it, he wouldn't have sold my grandmother's belongings, young Master Chin said. Later, I heard that he loved to drink. It was probably lost or stolen when he went out drinking at night. Either way, I was so furious that I lashed out at him. Wait a minute. Wei Wuxian spoke up. You can't be vague with your words when it comes to matters of life and death. A lashing can be trivial or serious. There's quite a range of potential severity there. What exactly do you mean by lashed out at him? Young Master Chin's eyebrows twitched. I remember that I gave him a light beating. Wei Wuxian blinked. Um, were you the one... Who broke his leg? Why the fuck didn't I think of that? After a pause, young Master Chin continued as if nothing was amiss. I don't know about that, and I don't know how heavy-handed the servants were with their blows, but he was a former servant of our household, after all, so I never intended to do any real harm. If he decided to bottle up his anger and hate me in secret, there was nothing I could have done about it. Listening from the side, Lan Chijui could not help but blurt his thoughts. Young Master Chin, th this is pulls apart from what you said in the beginning. Why did you hold so much back when my two seniors asked you to make things clear? I thought peace would, ret would return to my household as long as I had some talismans and a treasured sword, Young Master Chin said. How could I know that I'd have to describe some irrelevant old nonsense? Fucking rich people. Wei Wuxian's tone rose and fell as he explained the issue. No, no, no. That wasn't irrelevant old nonsense. The situation is serious right now, young Master Chen. Think about it. You scolded him and beat him when he was alive, and you might have even broken his leg. If he really didn't sell that jade pendant, he died a wrongful death. Who is he supposed to go looking for, if not you? Young Master Chen immediately refuted the accusation. I wasn't the one who killed him, and he didn't commit suicide either. Why must he come looking for me? Huh? How do you know he didn't commit suicide? Wei Wuxian said. Maybe he did kill himself in a fit of anger and everyone else just thought it was an accident. That'd be even worse. He was a grown man, young Master Chen said. How could he kill himself out of anger over a trifle like this? Ah, yes. The old Motazushe themes. Just coming up to the surface. In our trade, making assumptions is the most taboo thing of all, Wei Wuxian said. Every person has a different mindset and temperament. It's hard to say whether a man would kill himself out of anger over a trifle. You have to understand that there can be a variety of reasons why a corpse would reanimate itself. 
It could have been provoked by someone kidnapping their wife and killing their son, or by something as trivial as someone not inviting them to play in the mud when they were kids. It definitely wasn't suicide, young Master Chen stubbornly insisted. If a man wanted to kill himself, he could put a noose around his neck or take poison. Why would he choose rolling down a slope as the method? He couldn't even guarantee it would kill him. It's definitely not suicide. What you say also makes sense, Wei Wuxian said. But young Master Chen, have you ever considered that he only rolled down the mountain and fell to his death because you crippled his leg and impaired his mobility? If that's the case, then it's no different from you actually killing him once you get down to it. Isn't that even worse? What do you mean by that? If that was actually what happened, it'd still be considered an accident, young Master Chin said with exasperated anger. Are you sure that you want to try and convince someone who died such a tragic death that it was an accident, Wei Wuxian said? Since he returned, it means someone has to take responsibility for the accident. Every statement young Master Chin made, Wei Wuxian refuted. Young Master Chin was clammy with cold sweat and his face was ashen. But there's no need to despair, Wei Wuxian continued. I'll tell you one last method you can use to save your life. Do this for now. What's the method? Young Master Chin demanded. Len Wangji only had to look at Wei Wuxian to know that he was planning to spout nonsense again. He shook his head. Listen carefully, Wei Wuxian said. You have to open the doors to the residents in the main hall that have already been breached. Ensure that they are kept unobstructed. Even if you don't open them, you can't stop that thing anyway. Okay, young Master Chen said. Dismiss all uninvolved people from the house, Wei Wuxian continued. Take care not to hurt the innocent. They've pretty much all left, young Master Chen said. Good, Wei Wuxian said. Then find a virgin boy brimming with yang energy to sit on a long bench positioned in front of your bedroom. Have him keep guard at midnight and take the necessary measures for which the situation calls. That's all? That's all, Wei Wuxian said. The virgin boy is already here. As for the rest... Oh, he means Lan Shijui! Not my son! As for the rest, young Master Chen can ignore it and just wait for daybreak with peace of mind. Wei Wuxian was referring to Lan Shijui. The corners of young Master Chen's mouth twitched when he heard the last statement, and he swept a glance at the gentle, delicate-looking boy. If he's keeping guard outside, what about both of you? We will be keeping guard inside with you, of course, Wei Wuxian said. We'll make a backup plan if the outside defense can't hold up and the fierce corpse fights his way in. Young Master Chen really couldn't hold back anymore. Can't we just ask this gentleman to keep guard outside? He was referring, he was referring to Lan Wangji, and thus Wei Wuxian was dumbstruck. Who? Him? He almost fell over laughing. The only reason Wei Wuxian didn't actually hit the ground was because Lan Wangji wrapped an arm around his shoulder. No, Lan Wangji answered. Young Master Chen was rather displeased by this terse refusal. Why not? You forgot what I just said, Wei Wuxian replied solemnly. It has to be a virgin. Young Master Chen didn't believe it. What? He isn't one? Long after Lan Wangji... Lan Shijui saw young Master Chen out of the little bamboo abode. Wei Wuxian was still bowled over with laughter. Lan Wangji glanced at Wei Wuxian and suddenly scooped him onto his lap. Are you done laughing? Lan Wangji asked mildly. No, Wei Wuxian answered. Perched on Lan Wangji's lap, he said, Hang on, Jun, your looks are really deceiving. Everyone says you're a man who is open and above board, ascetic and chaste. I feel very wronged. Lan Wangji hauled him further up his lap so the two were closer together. Wronged. It's really outrageous, Wei Wuxian said. See, you're obviously no longer a virgin, but everyone assumes it when they see your face. I'd never even touched a girl's hand in my former life, except for when I was in the process of saving her life, but not one person believed I was still a virgin. He started counting his fingers one at a time. At school and on night hunts, everyone always said I was a playboy. At the burial mounds, everyone always said I was a mad sex fiend. I'm suffering in silence even now, and have no way to lodge a formal complaint. 
Without batting an eyelid, Len Wangji firmly covered one of Wei Wuxian's hands with his own. A barely perceptible hint of a smile rippled through his eyes. And yet you still smile, Wei Wuxian accused. You are a cold and heartless man who lacks compassion. For what it's worth, I was still ranked fourth on the list of the Cultivation Clan's top young masters, but it turns out that I only kissed one person in that lifetime. I always thought it was some beautiful female cultivator who was smitten with me that at least made me feel like I, Wei Ying, hadn't lived in vain. Who would have thought it would end up being you? Hearing this comment, Lan Wangji couldn't sit still anymore. He pinned Wei Wuxian to the bed. Is it a bad thing that it was me? What are you so nervous for? When the appointed hour came around, Lan Chujui had been waiting in the courtyard with little apples reins in hand for quite a while before Wei Wuxian and Lan Wangji finally slowly emerged from the house. He initially wanted to remind them, Wei Chenbei, you're wearing Han Wang Jun's clothes by mistake again. But upon reflection, he silently swallowed back the words. That's got to be why they did it. Or that's got to be like what gave them the idea. That's got to be a reference. Right? Right? Unless this was like literally like written and published after the show aired. That had to be that that that's got to be. Oh, my God. That makes me so happy. <sighs> After all, Wei Chenbei made that same mistake every two or three days. Lan Chijui would surely exhaust himself to death if he had to remind him each time. What was more, Wei Chenbei would just keep wearing Heng Wangjun's clothes because he considered it too much trouble to go change. Deciding it was pointless to remind him, Lan Chijui feigned obliviousness. Wei Wuxian settled himself onto a little apple, then fished an apple from the saddlebag and took a crisp bite. Lan Chijui stared at the apple, finding it awfully familiar. After a moment's hesitation, he asked, Wei Chenbei, isn't that one of the fruits that young Master Chin brought over? That's right, Wei Wuxian confirmed. Lan Chijui felt the need to press the topic. Fruit that had originally been brought by a fierce corpse? It certainly was. Is it okay to eat? Lan Chijui wondered. It's fine. It just fell on the ground. Give it a wash and it can be eaten. Would an apple from a fierce corpse be toxic? Lan Chijui asked. I can answer that question. Nope, Wei Wuxian responded. How would Chen Bei know? And Wei Wuxian replied, because I've already fed five or six of them to Little Apple. Little Apple, stop it! Don't bunk! Lan Jan, save me! Oh my god. These fucking two. Traveling with these two. Ugh. Ugh. Lan Wangji grabbed the reins of the furious little apple and took the apple from Wei Wuxian's mouth with his other hand. Do not eat these anymore. We will buy some tomorrow. Holding Lan Wangji's shoulder for support, Wei Wuxian finally managed to settle back into his seat. I was just trying to save some money for Hang Wangjun. You will never need to do so, Lan Wangji said. Service top in every sense of the word. I'm just... Wei Wuxian beamed as he tickled the underside of Lan Wangji's chin. <sighs> Suddenly, he seemed to remember something and casually asked, Oh, right. Shijui, are you a virgin? He asked the question with such ease, but Lan Shijui promptly spat out his water, an action very unbecoming of a Lan. Noticing Lan Wangji glancing at him, Lan Shijui hurriedly composed himself. Don't be nervous, Wei Wuxian said. I was babbling nonsense to young Master Chen earlier. It's true, you sometimes need a virgin when casting spells or performing a ritual, ritual, but since you're using a sword to slay that fierce corpse, it makes no difference if you're a virgin or not, but I'd be very shocked if you aren't. He hadn't even finished his sentence when a red-eared and red-faced Lan Shijui cut in. Uh, of course I am! The empty Chin residence really had its doors wide open in the middle of the night, as expected. Young Master Chin had already been waiting for several hours. Lan Chijui stood before Young Master Chin's bedroom door. Despite not wearing any armor or even a helmet, he still looked very cool-headed and dependable. Seeing the air of youthful fearlessness that surrounded him, like a newborn calf that feared no tiger, Young Master Chin's frown relaxed a little. But he still couldn't rest easy. After entering his bedroom, he closed the door behind him and turned around. Is it really okay to have that Young Master guard the door? 
What if the exorcism fails and I end up with another life on my hands? The couple had already taken their seats on the other side of the room. No lives will be lost, Wei Wuxian said. Young Master Chen, think about how many days that fierce corpse has been making a, com a commotion at your residence. Has there been a single life lost in that time? Young Master Chen sat down as well. Wei Wuxian put one of the pears thrown by the fierce corpse on the table. Have some fruit to calm your nerves. Thanks to the stress of the past few days, young Master Chin was in a daze. He picked up the pear and brought it to his mouth. Just as he was about to speak, he heard strange sounds. That's a creepy thumping sound. In that instance, a cold gust swept into the room. The candle flame on the table flickered. The pear tumbled from young Master Chin's hand and rolled away. He gripped the hilt of his sword once more. The strange sounds grew increasingly louder and closer. Each time, the candle flame quivered as if it was afraid. The sound of a longsword leaving its sheath rang out from the other side of the door, and a faint black shadow flitted past the paper window. The strange thumping sound instantly vanished, replaced by the sounds of soaring and flapping and the thunderous crash of wooden furniture being smashed to pieces. Young Master Chin's face was ashen. What's going on outside? It's just a fight, Wei Wuxian said. Don't mind it. Lan Wangji listened for a moment, then commented, Excessive. Wei Wuxian understood what he meant. Judging by the sound of his sword and footsteps, Lan Shijui's strikes were swift, but that ferocity came at the expense of focus, and his blows weren't decisive. Although his attacks weren't weak, they weren't consistent with the principles of the Lan Clan of Gusu's sword techniques. If his spirit, chi, and mind could not be unified, or if he used a mishmash of styles, he might stray from the path and hit a dead end when trying to cultivate to a higher level. He's already pretty good, Wei Wuxian said. So Zhu is still young and doesn't have full control of his attacks yet. Once he gets a little older and spars with more people, he'll figure it out. Then Wang Ji shook his head and listened for a moment before he suddenly looked at Wei Wuxian, who was astonished as well. Wei Wuxian could tell that a few of Lan Shijui's attacks had not used techniques from the Lan Clan of Gusu, but rather from the Jiang Clan of Yang Meng. Oh, scandal. Almost like he's from two dads. However, he had never taught the Lan Clan of Gusu's juniors any such things. So Julie and the others often go on night hunts with Jin Ling. He probably picked it up unconsciously while blows were exchanged. He hazarded a guess. A guess. Inappropriate, Ren Wangji stated. Are you going to punish him when you get back then? Yes. What are you two talking about, young Master Chin wondered. They're just, you know, chatting about their child, how he's doing in school, what he will need to do eventually to, you know, achieve the success that they have planned out for him. Like, it's just, it's couple talk, man. They have a kid. What do you think? Wei Wuxian picked up the pear from the ground and set it beside Master, young Master Chin's hand again. Nothing. Eat something to calm your nerves. Don't be so nervous. Then he said to Lan Wangji with a smile, But Hang Wanjun, you're truly impressive. It's one thing for me to identify sword techniques from the Jiang clan of Yang Man, but how can you tell? Lan Wangji seemed to be stumped for a moment before he answered, I remembered them from the many times we have sparred. That's why I said you're impressive, Wei Wuxian said. I've only traded blows with you using the Jiang clan of Yang Meng's style a few times, and that was over a decade ago. And yet you can remember the techniques and identify them from sound alone. Isn't that impressive? As he spoke, he pushed the candle flame over to Lang Wanji in order to see if his earlobes had gone red. Oh my fucking god. However, Lan Wangji saw through his wicked intent and grasped Wei Wuxian's hand, pushing the candle back toward him. The candle flame wavered like it was drunk as it was pushed to and fro, its light flickering across Wei Wuxian's smiling eyes and curved lips. The sight made Lan Wangji swallow hard. Suddenly, they both froze for a moment, and Wei Wuxian made a surprised noise. Looking as if he was about to face a formidable foe, young Master Chin asked, What's wrong? Is there a problem with the candle? Wei Wuxian was only speechless for a moment. No, the candle's decent, though it would be better if it was a bit brighter. However, he whispered to Lan Wangji, Those last couple moves Suju used were pretty slick, but they didn't sound like your family's sword techniques, or mine. 
After a while, Lang Wanji said with a frown, Perhaps they were Wen techniques. Understanding dawned on Wei Wushan. Wen Ning taught him, most likely. Just as well. Because he's really from three... I hate her. I hate her. I don't know how I could spend any more time expressing how much I hate this woman. What the f- As they spoke, the thunderous noise outside persisted, crashing and banging louder and louder. Young Master Chin's face grew more and more ashen, and even Wei Wushan was starting to find it a little ludicrous. Shijui, we've been chatting for a while in here, he called out. Even if you're tearing the house down, shouldn't you be finished by now? Lan Shijui responded from where he was outside. Wei Chenbei, this fierce corpse is very good at dodging. It keeps avoiding me. Is it afraid of you? Wei Wushan asked. No, Lan Shijui answered. It can fight, but it doesn't seem interested in fighting me. It doesn't want to hurt a bystander? Wei, Wu Wei Wushan wondered in surprise before commenting to Lan Wangji. This is interesting. It's been ages since I last saw a fierce corpse this reasonable. Young Master Chin, on the other hand, fretted restlessly. Can he do it? Why hasn't he defeated it yet? Wei Wushan had yet to say a word when Lan Shijui called out, Hang Wanjun, Wei Chen Bei, this fierce corpse's left hand is curled into a claw, but its right hand is balled into a fist. It seems to be grasping something. On hearing this, Wei Wushan and Lan Wangji exchanged a glance. Wei Wusheng gave a slight nod of his head and Lan Wangji stated, Shijui, put away your sword. Hang on, Jun? Lan Shijui said in astonishment. I still haven't gotten whatever's in its hand. Wei Wusheng stood up. It's fine. Put away your sword. There's no need to keep fighting. No need to keep fighting, young Master Chen parroted. Affirmative, Lan Shijui acknowledged from outside the room. Sure enough, he sheathed his sword and leapt aside. What is this all about, young Master Chin said. That thing is still outside. Wei Wuxian rose. There's no need to keep fighting. The matter is more or less resolved. Only one last step remains. What step, young Master Chin asked. Wei Wuxian kicked the door open. This step. The, wood door, the wooden door panel sprang open with a bang. A dark figure stood rigidly before the door. Its hair was disheveled, its face filthy, and its white eyes uncommonly savage. On seeing the corpse's face, young Master Chin's expression changed drastically. He drew his sword as he beat a swift retreat, but the fierce corpse assailed him like a gust of black wind and grabbed him by the neck. Lan Shijui, stunned at the scene that awaited him upon his entry to the room, was about to rush to the rescue when Wei Wuxian stopped him. Although young Master Chin was unyielding and unlikable by nature, Lan Shijui did not think his crime was heinous enough that he deserved to die. However, he knew that his two seniors wouldn't simply sit back and watch the fierce corpse kill the man, so he composed himself a little. The dead servant's fingers were like an iron hoop around young Master Chin's neck, choking him until his face turned purple and his veins bulged. Although he stabbed the fierce corpse again and again, it was like stabbing a piece of paper. The corpse showed no reaction. Instead, it slowly raised its right fist toward young Master Chin's face as if it planned to punch his brain out of his skull. The others in the room stared at the scene playing out. Lan Shijui could barely hold down his sword-bearing hand. Just as it seemed young Master Chin's head was about to explode, Lan Shijui saw the fierce corpse loosen its grip. An oval object slid from between the fingers of its right hand. A black string dangled from one end, which the fierce corpse attempted to place over young Master Chin's head. Young Master Chin was speechless. So was Lan Shijui. After three attempts, the corpse managed with some difficulty to loop the string over young Master Chin's head. The struggle was so excessively clumsy and rigid that it was truly hard to find threatening. It did not deal a killing blow, and it did not look like it was planning on strangling young Master Chin to death with that thin string. And so, Lan Shijui and young Master Chin simultaneously heaved a sigh of relief. But they had yet to fully release that breath when the fierce corpse threw out an unexpected punch at lightning speed. The blow was powerful and brutal, and young Master Chin managed only to yelp before it knocked him out cold. He fell to the ground with blood flowing from his mouth and nose. 
After the fierce corpse was done hitting him, it turned around and set out to leave. Lan Chijui, watching the scene unfold with his mouth agape, gripped the hilt of his sword. But he found the situation inexplicably absurd, and somehow it seemed it would be made even more ludicrous if he reacted too seriously. Thus, he was torn on whether he should make a move. However, Wei Bushan was laughing his ass off. He waved at Lan Chijui. Don't bother. Leave it as it wishes. The fierce corpse turned and glanced at him. With a nod of its head, it hobbled along, dragging its broken leg, and jumped out the door. Lan Chijui blanked out for a moment as he, ga as he gazed at its fleeting back. Wei Chenbei, this... Is it okay to just let it go? Lan Wangji leaned down to check on young Master Chen, whose face had been beaten bloody. It's fine. Lan Chijui's attention shifted back to young Master Chen. Only then did he have the presence of mind to look closely at the object hanging from his neck. A jade pendant. The red string that secured the jade pendant looked as if it had been rolling around in the soil for many years, turned black by filth. However, the jade itself was still a lustrous white. This... It's now been returned to its rightful owner, Wei Wuxian said. Once Lan Wangji had made sure that the young master Chen was just unconscious and in no danger of losing his life, the two left the Chin residence with Lan Shijui in tow. Before leaving, Wei Wuxian thoughtfully closed the three doors for young master Chen. He didn't have it easy, Lan Shijui said. Wei Wuxian got on little apple. What? Are you talking about young master Chen? Just one punch from the fierce corpse and it was all over for good. That's already very easy, okay? I'm not talking about young Master Chen. I'm talking about the fierce corpse, Lan Shijui explained. In the records that I've seen regarding malicious ghosts and fierce corpses avenging a grievance, most of the feuds stemmed from a kindness that was taken for granted in life. When they die, they go on to kill people, and they're feral when they're wreaking havoc. But that fierce corpse... Lan Shijui stood in front of the disfigured main doors and glanced back at the claw marks, still finding the situation incredible. After it turned into a fierce corpse, it searched the mountain for two years for the jade pendant it lost while it was still alive. This is the first time I've ever seen a fierce corpse transforming to do something like this, instead of coming back to kill and seek revenge. Wei Wuxian fished out another apple from the saddlebag. That's why I said I hadn't seen such a reasonable evil spirit in a long time. Had he been slightly more vindictive, it wouldn't have been unusual for me to sever one of young master for it to sever one of young Master Chin's legs, or even worse, massacre his entire family. Lan Shijui thought for a moment, Chen Bei, I still have an unanswered concern. Did young Master Chin break the man's leg? And did that directly cause him to lose his footing and fall to his death? Whatever the truth may be, the guy doesn't hold young Master Chin accountable, at any rate, Wei Wu Shen said. Hmm, Lan Shijui said. Oh my god, like father, like son. So it was really satisfied with just one punch? By the looks of it, yes, Lan Wangji replied. There was a loud, clear crunch as Wei Wuxian took a bite of the apple, right? As the saying goes, people will strive to prove their worth and vindicate themselves. If someone can't rest in peace, it's because they're suppressing something in their heart. He pelted him with some fruit, returned the jade pendant, and knocked his block off. He let off some steam and is no longer suppressing anything. Damn. If only every evil spirit was so reasonable, Lan Chijui lamented. Hearing this, Wei Wuxian laughed. Oh, you silly child. Even human beings are unreasonable when they bear someone a grudge. You expect evil spirits to be amenable for, to reason? You must understand something. Everyone in the world feels like they've been treated unjustly. Lan Wangji tugged Little Apple's reins and commented in a mild tone. He is lucky. Wei Wuxian agreed. Indeed, young Master Chen is really very lucky. Lan Shijui had held this back for a long time, but he could finally no longer help himself. He said, in all earnestness, but I somehow feel just one punch is letting him off lightly. Whether it was because he was still out cold from the fierce corpse's punch, or because he'd completely lost faith in Wei Wuxian, young Master Chen never again came calling on them. But seven days later, news of him reached their ears. The gossip went like this. One morning, they found a young man's corpse on the side of the main road. It had been half decayed, dressed in tattered funeral garb, and stank to the high heavens. 
They had been discussing discussing whether they should roll him up in a mat and dig a pit somewhere to bury him, but in a massive act of kindness, young Master Chin had forked over the money needed to collect the remains and hold a proper burial. He was unanimously lauded for it for a long time after. Lan Wangji and Wei Wushan passed the Chin residence as they were leaving the city. It had long since repaired its main entrance and boasted two new imposing jet black doors. People came and went, sweeping away the grim atmosphere and bleak desolation of the days before. It was, once again, the very picture of a thriving house. Shit. Shit. Wow. This is such a good example of a great little story not designed for maximum drama. I guess maybe it's because of the types of stories that I genuinely love. I don't usually go for, um, well, that's kind of hard to explain. I, I really love the shows that go for, you know, the maximum drama, the maximum stakes possible within whatever the show or project or book or whatever is. Um, so it doesn't always have to be world ending, but just big stakes relative to whatever the story is, right? I love that shit. I really do. Um, and so do a lot of people. It's a very commercial approach um, to storytelling, right? For a variety of reasons. Um, which makes every now and then a story like that just so delightful to come across. Because it didn't need or want to go to those high extremes while still telling a very, like, just nice little story with an unexpected payoff. That, w that was like a nice episode. That was a that was a lovely little episode of television, really. That that whole story, that would be a much needed piece of a season. That I think, given whatever came around this episode in the season, I feel like a lot of people, a lot of people would point out and be like, "Oh, weak episode of the season," but then a lot of other would people like, "No, actually, that's kind of my favorite." <laughs> Because when you make art that so hinges on everything being super important, every now and then, a breather of something more incidental-ish, um, feeling a bit softer, feeling a bit more just like the daily lives of so-and-so, that can actually really, really help you um, connect and, um, and further find the characters like more endearing um and just bond with the overall story in the world and the characters so, so, so much harder than if it's just constantly high stakes, people changing, people evolving, things are always shifting and moving and all that stuff. Within a story like that, if you can slow down and have something more like that, um, it can go a very long way to sometimes without even realizing it that can push a viewer or reader or whoever from being like oh my god i love the i love these characters to no i will ride or die for them i like why can't i just like live in a big house with them like that kind of nah. yes that so weird writer rant over we are on page 327 right before uh, the fifth side story called the iron hook. Um, and that is it 
for today. I think we went a little long, but goddamn if that wasn't worth it. So thank you so much for tuning in all the way to the end. Um, that's rare in YouTube land. So like seriously, I deeply appreciate anybody who sticks to the end of any video that I do because that's you're you're one of the real ones, right? I love you. Um, we will pick this up next week. We will actually finish this next week, which it doesn't matter what side story it ends on. Bring the tissues because this is going to be a bit of an emotional moment. We've been working our way through these five volumes for God. When did I start reading this for a long time now? And so this will be a little bit of an end of an era, but that's okay. I still have to watch the dog. Walk. It's fine, but like, it's not, we will do that next week. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Please, please, please take care of yourselves because I love you so, so, so much.